Were you ever told, be a man? Doesn't that sound weird to you? As if that means that you were... <laughs> nah. As if that means that you're not a man by the fact alone that you were born a man, but that being a man is an... <laughs> but that being a man is an action. And what's worse, it's an incredibly stressful action to constantly perform without being yourself. Hi, my name is Rokas Leo, and today we'll speak about what it means to be a man. So last week I was in Amsterdam, WitCon Europe. For those who do not know, it's the biggest YouTube event which happens in major regions every year. And as YouTube is becoming an increasingly important part of my life, I was lucky enough to be invited by my friend Philip Zeppelin, a CEO expert, to be a participant there together with him. During VidCon, some major YouTubers were there and also they gave some AMA. And luckily enough, two of my favorite YouTubers were there in VidCon Europe, including Matt Pat of Game Theory and Anna Kana of Anna Kana. But this story is connected to Anna. For those who do not know Anna, she's creating self-help videos on YouTube with brutal honesty and very great humor. While I could talk more about her, the game changer that happened with this video was during Anna Akana's AMA. During it, one of the guys asked her something along the lines of a question like whether guys should also do a self-help YouTube channel, and she went on fire. She started saying how self-help videos for men are extremely missing from YouTube, that guys should talk more openly about the secret issues that all men actually have, yet none talk about it, and how beneficial that would be. And while my main YouTube channel is about martial arts and guy stuff, I still realized that this call needs to be answered. And then and there, I told myself, Anna, it's a deal. So thank you, Anna Akana, for the inspiration, and let's get on to the subject. So as I told before, men are told to be men from early on. Yet what does that really mean? Did anyone really explain to us in detail what does it mean to be a man? Or did we have to figure it out ourselves by observing other men, including our fathers, to pick it up? Most of us went on learning what it means to be a man by observing others and hearing about such incredible feat as men do not cry, men are always strong, men do not have feelings and do not share them. And while I'll talk about these one by one in the, in the rest of the video, let's begin by looking at the issue of picking up things from other men or from our fathers. First of all, what if a guy doesn't have a father? Is he doomed to not be a man for the rest of his life? Should he change his sex and his passport to undeveloped? And even those who have dads, most of our dads are far away from what we, we would want to become when we grow up or when we develop as a man, and they are far from perfect. But we're still forced by society to live up to this image of a man based on our father's image and of the man around us. By the way, I love my dad. He's great. Well, no one is perfect. I'm talking in, in general, right? Okay. Okay, let's move on. Now to come back to the three mentioned qualities of a man, let's start with the first one. Men do not cry. Really? Are we physically incapable of crying? Do we not have some crying glands or something? And if we do cry, does that mean we're broken? Crying is actually a natural phenomenon. It is a means of releasing and venting out our built up emotions. If you do not allow yourself to vent those emotions, you're gonna have to swallow them down and keep them to yourself. And what happens if you don't take your garbage for too long? Sure. Most men vent in different ways. Beer, sex, fighting. Not to say that anything is wrong with all three of those, but is it really best to do all of them coming from built up negative emotions? Do they really translate well to these actions? And if we realize that it is okay for men to cry, it doesn't mean you have to cry about everything, but should men refrain from crying at all? I would question that. Next one, men are always strong. Well, yes, physically most men are generally stronger than most women, but even that is not always the case. Yet by nature, our physiques have differences and normally men's physique is stronger. But did you know that a man has to always be strong, not only physically, but also mentally and emotionally? Not to say that being strong mentally and emotionally is bad, but he has to be that way all the time. In the living world, everything has rhythms and cycles. Even nature has spring, summer, autumn, winter. Animals have their cycles and well, women have their own cycles. And it's normal. Yet men, men know they cannot have their cycles. They always have to be springtime. A man always has to be confident, always has to show success, always has to know what he's doing. Do you think it's possible? If everything has rhythms and cycles, how can you expect a man to always be at his peak performance? Yet what happens when both the man and his partner as well 
expect him from that. You're setting up expectations which are impossible to deliver. And that means half of the time you will feel strong, yet all the time will be afraid to lose that feeling, which causes a lot of extra stress. And half of the other time you will feel totally miserable just because you will think that you will always have to be strong. And when you will not feel strong, then it's just, it's a double damage. And trying to cover that up and pretending that you are strong isn't a solution either. Which brings me to my next point. Men do not have or share feelings. Let's start with the first bit, men do not have feelings, which is already a ridiculous statement and expectation, or that men are less easily hurt. Men are potentially better at not showing it, that may be true, but generally women are much more better at dealing with pain than men. Did you ever see a video of a man going through the same artificially conducted pain of birth? <laughs> they all bail out. Yet we still pretend that nothing has hurt us, that we are unbeatable and unbreakable, while keeping all of our doubts and negative feelings to ourselves, choking with them as they gather and gather and keep on gathering. And one of the best ways to actually free up those emotions, those gathered emotions, is to talk about it. But yet again, men do not talk about their feelings. Which brings back again to the same problem of negative feelings accumulating in a man. Not talking about your feelings brings us to even another issue. When you're with a group of six guys and five out of six say that they're doing great, that their sex life is great, that everything is doing good, being the sixth guy, you think to yourself, am I the only one who has issues? And coming to that conclusion makes your situation even much worse. Because again, you feel like you're the only one having problems, that nobody's gonna understand you and that you suck and that you fail much more than others. But in reality, Everyone has issues, yet when you don't hear others telling you about it and everyone telling they're doing fine, you start to think that something is wrong with you. And then you go on and tell to the next guy that you are doing fine. Do you see the vicious cycle that I'm talking about here? It's not only the society pushing men to live up to impossible standards, we are also doing this to each other and making it even worse. Did you know that men are 1.8 times more prone to suicide than women? And did you know that one of the main explanations for this tragic phenomena is in relationship to social constructions of hegemonic masculinity? You ask what that means? It is male gender roles emphasizing greater levels of strength, independence, and status that often prevent men from seeking help for suicidal feelings and depression. All of this vicious circle has to stop. And the first way to stop it is first of all, to start bringing awareness to it, to talk more about it, and to realize how ridiculous and toxic this behavior is. Secondly, we should stop pushing this twisted idea to each other and stop expecting us both from ourselves and from others. To live in an artificial shell of unbreakableness is not real strength. To turn yourself into a victim and to cry all the time about it is neither. It is important for both a man and a woman to maintain a sense of balance, a sense of centeredness, which helps us through difficult times. Yet it takes guts to show actual emotions, to admit that you're vulnerable, that you are not perfect, and to allow yourself to be that way. That is what a true man is. A person who lives and survives through hardship, yet does not pretend that it doesn't exist. A person who understands his emotions and respects his both strong and weak sides at the same time. Because in the end, no one of us is perfect. To be perfect is to actually be yourself. While we could talk more about specific methods how to deal with all of these situations as they arise in our social surroundings, talking about it and identifying this problem is the very first and very important step to begin with. And in terms of some life hacks, how to deal with it, I will share in the next video. But before I finish, if you agree that men should not be expected to be unbeatable machines and that they should allow themselves to admit and accept their feelings, make sure you share this video, send it to your boyfriends, brothers, fathers, and your guy friends. They deserve to know how stupid it is to try to be a man. This was Rokas Leo and I'll see you in the next video, hopefully in already a better world that we already created together.